Space sims are one of those genres that benefit from supporting a multitude of control methods. Often, the more versatile these are, the better. Now, this new mouse from Lexip then is a great example of this, as its unique design supports not only the regular mouse axis, but also two additional joysticks. The mouse you see me unboxing here then is the PU94, which was sent to me by Lexip as a part of this sponsored video. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about using the PU94 specifically with Elite Dangerous and looking to see if it actually brings any benefits to the game. Before we get to that though, let's talk a bit about the mouse itself. Also, do check out the link in the video description where you can find out everything you need to know. The mouse is available through both Best Buy and GameStop online and offline. It's also available on Amazon. And Lexip have also said they are bundled in with Ubisoft's latest game, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Breakpoint. All Lexip customers would receive a special benefit on their purchase of this new title from Ubisoft. Now, some of you may be familiar with the 3D mouse from Lexip, and it's well worth mentioning that the PU94 is the latest iteration, and also it's much improved over the previous design. The mouse itself has a fairly premium feel to it, and when in at just over 15 ounces, it certainly feels solid in the hands. The laser sensor is rated at 12,000 DPI 150 IPS, and the DPI can be set to custom ratings through the Lexip app, and is switchable using the button on the mouse. And this isn't the only programmable button on the mouse, in fact all the buttons as well as all the axes are fully programmable. Underneath the mouse you'll find 6 ceramic pads which significantly reduce friction, and the pads can be purchased separately. And if you're into adding a bit of style, the mouse also features LED lighting, which again is fully customizable. The two joysticks are of course the main feature. The side joystick or the thumb joystick will be instantly familiar to anyone who has ever used a gamepad. Meanwhile, the second joystick is a little more unusual, and this comes as an integrated tilt axis. You can see me using that right there. So that gives us the specs of the PU94, but how does it actually perform when it comes to Elite Dangerous? Well, the thing I really like here is that you can, of course, customize the mouse to suit your own personal preferences. For me, pitch and yaw were on the regular axis for the mouse. Meanwhile, I set rotation to the X axis of the thumbstick and the vertical thrust on the Y axis of the thumbstick. This, for me, is far more preferable to using rotation and thrust on the keyboard. The problem with the keyboard is that those controls are either fully engaged or fully disengaged. There's nothing in between. A joystick allows for far more finesse and finer control. Now the thumbstick itself is reasonably sensitive, there is perhaps a little room for some improvement here as when I was moving the stick I found I had to move it slightly further than I would have liked before it actually started engaging, but nonetheless it still actually worked very very well. Now in this example you can see me using the tilt joystick. I set the X axis to lateral thrust and you can see me using that right here. Ultimately then, due to the way that the PU94 is designed, it means that you can put all control axis onto the mouse itself, and you benefit greatly from the analog input when doing this. Now this setup of course isn't the only setup available, you are free to use the PU94 however you wish. For example, here I tested out having the power settings about to the tilt axis. And for me, there was a personal reason for this, when in combat I found the tilt axis a little difficult to use with the lateral thrust, whilst at the same time using the regular mouse axis to control pitch and yaw. But as many of you long time viewers will no doubt know, I'm not exactly the highest ranking player when it comes to combat. Ultimately, this led me to two conclusions. Firstly, when one setup isn't working for you, it's very easy to switch to something that actually does work for you. And secondly, I suspect it's highly likely that those with huge combat experience will probably be able to master the tilt axis far quicker than me. After all, it seems to me that there's a huge benefit to having multiple analog inputs on the mouse in combat, as it retains all the benefits of a mouse, whilst also adding the benefits of a gamepad, or to a certain extent, a HOTUS. Elite isn't all about combat though, and it only takes a few moments to come up with other ideas for how to put the PU94 to good use. For example, the thumbstick can easily be bound to head look, allowing you to continue to have full control over your ship whilst you are looking around with the head look function. Likewise, it also allows for more flexible control of many other areas of the game, such as the SRV. Now, as you might be expecting, mining also works very well. Also, exploration is actually pretty interesting here. So if you've ever used the full spectrum scanner with a mouse, you'll know that it's not exactly intuitive. 
The building joysticks on the PU-94 instantly get around this problem, and here on the screen right now, I had the tuning set on the tilt axis or the tilt X axis and the pitch and yaw set to the thumbstick. It worked remarkably well. Underscoring all of this though is the one principle that's true to every new control method that you try out when it comes to Elite. It takes time to master. Now many of you will likely have experienced the same as this. I remember when I first transitioned from Gamepad to HOTUS, I had to relearn everything. It was the same game, the control principles were essentially the same, however the different input method that was changing from the gamepad to a stick meant I had to relearn many things. Docking and combat were great examples of this. Of course it didn't take all that long to get used to the new control method, but the point is there was a relearning process, and the same is true with the PU-94 mouse. Diving into Elite Dangerous when using a mouse with the addition of joysticks built in does take some getting used to so fully expect to have to retrain yourself. All that said though, the payoff is certainly worth it. So, let's take a look at the Lexip software then. The software allows you to fully configure the mouse, and then it has four separate categories, software, buttons, lighting, and options. These each have further elements within them. Within the software, you'll be able to set which specific functionality you want to be bound to any particular mouse action. The software also contains a number of built-in profiles and additional ones for games like Elite Dangerous can be downloaded from the Alexip website. From within the app, it's also possible to control the lighting for the PU-94's RGB LEDs. All in all, I found the PU-94 to be an interesting take on the mouse. The build quality is high enough that it can certainly qualify as a gaming mouse. The two joysticks, meanwhile, add significant options to how you might want to approach your game. There's no getting away from the fact that having joysticks on a mouse takes a significant relearning process when it comes to Elite Dangerous, and it's possible that some people simply might not be able to pick up certain techniques. For example, try as I might, I simply couldn't get used to having lateral thrust on the tilt axis. But that said, the flexibility of the control schemes means there will always be an alternative option that will work for you. The bottom line then is that if you're already a mouse player with Elite and you're looking to enhance the options you have available to you, then the PU-94 is well worth looking at. Alternatively, if you're looking for something that has a bit more finesse than a gamepad, the PU-94 is certainly a great option. For more information on this mouse then, do have a look at the link in the video description. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.